yo, 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 to go intro and today is the last day of 2020 I started making these tutorials as a bit of a joke about four months ago and I didn't think I'd have such a peng community of people that just want to make renders and learn I wanted to make one final video so today we're making a rotating iridescent logo type thing <laughs> So let's hop into Blender, shall we? So deleting our cube, we're going to insert a torus. This one, oh, okay. Before we click anything else down here in this little dialog box, um, we're gonna change the major segments to 50 and the minor segments to 25. And then the minor radius, if you wanna hit seven on your numpad, just so you can see the top view, we're going to change that to 0 0.1 um, Let me move my head back real quick Okay uh, Hit 7 to go to top view and hit shift A and we're going to add some text um, Hit tab and write whatever you like Ooh. Hit tab to leave text mode In the text properties I'm going to change the font under font and we'll go for OCR. I don't know why I love this font so much. Actually, I'm gonna change that to capital. Now select your text, go to object, set origin, origin to geometry. So we've got our origin in the middle. Now hit shift S and put the selection to cursor. So that snapped our text right in the middle. If you hit S, we can scale it up a tiny bit like this. I think that looks good for me. Um, quickly select your torus, right click and shade smooth. Cool. Um, select your text again and go into text editor. <sighs> hit geometry, press one on your numpad to go to the side and we're going to extrude it. Not all the way, I'd just say like a bit in the middle because we're also going to add a bevel. So we'll go down to bevel here and increase the depth. I normally just make it a bit chunky, go back into side view and then holding shift, I slowly drag that number down so it's perfectly flush with the side. So now I've got a nice bevel, I'm gonna increase the resolution to nine. And, and then if you want, this is optional under profile. You can go and add like a snazzy little bevel or whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm not too fast. Cool. Now select your text again. Go to object, convert to, convert to mesh. Select both of them with shift and hit control J. Now we've got a joint object. It's all together. It's been united. It's one. Hit RX and hit 90 on your keyboard and that will rotate your logo 90 degrees. So now we want to make it rotate. There's lots of ways of doing it. If you wanted to, you could just hit N and uh, rotate it along the X, oops, along the Z, like that. But we're going to use a curve instead. So hit Shift A and insert a curve and a circle scale it up then we're going to hit tab and select this point the one directly in front of your logo and hit shift s and put a uh, cursor to selected now our 3d cursor is on our point hit tab to leave that and we'll come back to that in a second click your camera and hit shift s on that and put selection to cursor now our camera is on our 3D point. What we're also going to do is we're going to parent our camera to the curve so that it follows it round. Um, but before we do that, let's rotate our camera. So I'm going to do Alt-R while the camera is selected to clear all rotation. Then hit RX90 to turn it. And if you hit zero on the numpad, now you can kind of adjust how you want your logo to look. So firstly, under output properties, I'm gonna change this to 1920, the Instagram ratio, nice. And I'm going to split this view quickly. I hit zero to enter camera view on this side. 
and I'm going to scale up. First, let me parent it then. Um, before I do anything else, select your camera, then select the curve, hit Control P, and then follow path. And now we've got it rotating. If you wanted it to be a bit further away, that's cool. Just move, just scale up your circle however much you desire. That's cool with me. To change the speed of the rotating, select your curve, go here to Object Data Properties, scroll down to Path Animation, and you can change the amount of frames that the rotation takes. So I'm gonna go for 150. I'm going for 200 frames. I'm also going to make my animation end at 200 frames down here and start on frame zero. Sick. So now our curve is going to take 200 frames to our curve. Our spin is going to take 200 frames to complete. I think that is enough modeling for now. Let's start shading. Let's, let's do some of the fun stuff. So hold Z and go into render view. I'm gonna animate this in Eevee, so under render properties, make sure you've got Eevee selected, ambient, bloom, and screen need to be turned on. So up here in this window, we're going to go to shade editor, uh, press N to hide that, and under object, we're going to hit the world. Now, last time I was super lazy, so let's not be lazy this time. I don't know why I just deleted that. <laughs> Um, shift D to duplicate your background node then we're going to add a light someone commented oh use node wrangler I should learn how to use a node wrangler but I got a lot of things going on I'm a full-time uni student so node la node lang node wrangler will make an appearance some point in the future okay um yeah, so we're going to add a environment texture node over here. And the way we're going to connect these all up is environment texture goes to color. Um, we're going to add a mix shader in the middle here. And this background goes into the first, second background goes into the second, and is camera ray goes into factor, and shader goes into surface. Now this colour here, you can change it to whatever you want if you notice. Your background colour will change. Ooh, I kind of like that. Nay, we go with black. Um, over here, we're going to get HDRI. I'm using Urban Alley. I don't really think it makes much of a difference, but I will link it in the description. Select your logo and go over here to World and hit Object. We're now going to add some materials to our logo and make it this really cool iridescent shade. I said in the last tutorial that I want to do some more complex shaders. So here we are. This is one step up in complexity. Let's let's get it. So we're going to add a hue saturation node here. We're gonna add a color ramp there and connect color to color, color to color. I'm going to change this RGB value to HSL and change near to far. Change this um, black to purple. And <clears throat> same on this side. This will give us a whole spectrum of colors. If you can see here, we've got the whole rainbow. See a rainbow. See a rainbow. Our material is still very rough. So bring the roughness down to zero and metallic all the way up. But nothing is changing. It's not iridescent at all. So we're going to add a couple more nodes going to add layer weight and put facing into factor you are going to add a magic texture shift a and look for magic texture and put the color into normal let's quickly move over to the other side and add one more node here emission and a mix shader here now we're going to plug emission into shader print support into shader, unplug that guy, plug that in there, and then we're going to take a hue and just plug that in there. Sorry if that was really unelegant, I am going to learn how to show node systems a bit better and clearer soon. Um, but this is our setup, so let's increase the emission strength 
and that's starting to look kind of wavy. Um, going back to the magic texture, I'm gonna bring the scale down a bit because I just think that was it's just quite intense. I'm gonna go over scale of one and distortion of one, kind of like that. And the last thing I'll change is just change the hue to 0.4. I don't know why, but I like the way that looks. Um, so I think this is it and we're just going to render this out as we always do. Obviously you can do some compositing if you want. Check out my previous tutorial for how to add sparkles or more bloom if you want to do that. But yeah, I think we can go ahead and render this out. I'm going to change this to the desktop because that's what we do and just put a name on. Changes from PNG to FMM encoding from Etruscar to MPEG-4 and medium quality to perceptually lossless. I think we're good to go, so hit render animation. Okay, so this is the final render and it's looking very iridescent. And once again, thank you so much for supporting this channel and the four months that I've been making these stupid little tutorials, I've received so much love and I'm not perfect whatsoever, but I ended up getting such a positive response um, and it just pushes me to keep learning more so I can teach more. This is it for 2020 of Internet Girl. We'll see what the next year brings. Stay safe as always and we're going to render so much more cool stuff next year. Yeah.